Hello again. So, after the last video, I thought it'd be good to explain what vertex array objects are, vertex attributes, and buffers in a way that makes a lot more sense with diagrams and everything like that. So, let's go. The first function here is GeoGen Vertex Array. So, this function generates an object in the graphics memory. The vertex array object location is our way of storing that location in the CPU memory. So, you've got the vertex array object on the GPU with a location, and the location is stored on the CPU memory with the vertex array object location. So once we've generated this object, it's basically empty, and if we want to attach anything to it or do anything with it, we have to bind it first with GeoBind Vertex Array. And in our diagram, we'll basically say that it's active by making it green. We can have lots of vertex array objects, but we can only ever talk to one at a time. Underneath this, we have GeoGen Buffers. This basically does the same thing as GeoGen Vertex Arrays, only this creates a buffer instead. And the buffer has no purpose yet, but we do have the Particle Position Buffer Location. Now, the funny thing is, I'm doing something stupid here. I'm not actually storing the buffer location or deleting it. I did this because I believe that the buffer location no longer needed to be stored as I'm attaching it to the vertex array object. When the vertex array object is deleted, so this is the buffer at the same time. But it turns out that's not actually true. If I wanted the buffer to be deleted when the vertex array object is deleted, I need to mark it for deletion after attaching it to the vertex array object. And that sounds complicated, but I just need to pop this little function here and it's fixed. And by fixed, I mean that when the vertex array object is deleted, so is the buffer. Right, I'm just going to quickly make this function that's going to delete the buffer once the vertex array object is deleted. So gl delete buffers, and we want to delete one buffer. And it's very similar to the generate function. In case you haven't noticed, we still need to bind the uh, buffer. So what is it? Particle position buffer location. Uh, and that's that. That means that after we've unbound the uh, vertex array and the buffer, we can then mark this buffer for deletion by putting it underneath. If you were to put the GL delete buffers above here and then bind this inactive buffer, it's basically going to delete. Well, after it's written to the buffer and everything, it will just delete it straight away and you won't have anything to draw and that creates a problem. So make sure you do it after you uh, unbind the vertex array object and the uh, array buffer. Uh, and let's run this to make sure it works. So there's another thing I need to do quickly as well, because we haven't got a way to delete the vertex array object in memory. So you can see all the particles in the background. Hopefully they're just blue dots. They're really tiny. Um, right. So we haven't actually got a delete function for this. I'm just going to quickly make one. So if we say it's best to call this in a deconstructor, but um, I'm just going to put delete VAO so you guys understand what it means, because obviously it's a, the VAO is the vertex array object um oh inline it's it's randomly put inline now i don't really care right so to delete a vertex array object it's as simple as uh actually i'll tell you what no gl delete array uh delete vertex arrays one and it's exactly the same as the thing above part uh particle have i called what have i called actually up here vertex array object location okay vertex array object location um, so now we can delete the vertex array object whenever we want. Best to do it after the while loop. Delete vertex array objects. And that basically means that once it's finished uh, with the while loop, it will delete the, the particle, uh, well, the vertex array object. Uh, OpenGL automatically does this anyway when we, when we close off the program, I believe. I think it's, uh, it's like an automatic safety thing, but um, it's good practice to make sure you've got your own version of delete and one thing that is good to do is to check if the vertex we have the location is more than zero and that basically means that if the uh, vertex array object has a location then it means that there is an active vertex array object on the gpu memory and it deletes it okay yeah that's uh, that'll do that bit back to the fun edited video that's actually fun so when we bind the buffer to make it active it also becomes a buffer target. It, the target becomes a way to communicate with that buffer. We can see that in the buffer data function because the buffer location isn't actually used at all. The reason for this is because we can have multiple buffers active at once. There'll be a bit of a demonstration of this when we uh, make, well, add some more stuff to the particles in the next video. Anyway, let's move on to the vertex attributes because they're really weird too. Going to quickly go over the first three parameters because we've done this before and it's pretty straightforward. So the first value in this fu function is the location and the location is where this 
data is used in the shader. So XYZ for the position data and UV for the texture coordinates. We've not actually used UV yet. We're only using location zero for now, but in the future, we will actually use that for uh, texture stuff with compute shaders and all that fun stuff. Anyway, getting distracted. Now, the number of pieces of data for this attribute, three for the XYZ coordinates and two for the UV uh, coordinates or data or whatever you want to call it and then the type of this data which is gl float for both because they're both gl floats simple as that now i've been saying this normalize is a uh, mathematics term but it's actually not it turns out that this is to do with the type uh, if the data is floating point or fixed point i set this to false normally which means that it can continue being a floating point as it is a float all right, so really quickly, I just want to explain what the floating point value is. So when we've got a float and it is a floating point, then the decimal place can belong anywhere along this. And it basically means you can have anything from a really uh, long, like real number. Uh, so it's really accurate. Or you can have it as a really high number and it won't be that accurate on this end. Um, when you set G the value to normalize with the GL vertex attribute pointer, it basically sets it so that the fixed point is here, I believe. And then I'm not sure what the highest number this can be, but uh, basically imagine that it just makes it really accurate on this end. And that's the reason we've got the GL normalized thing. And that's kind of the difference between a fixed point and a floating point. So a floating point can be anywhere and a fixed point is one that just doesn't move. It's going to be there permanently or there permanently. It, just, it really depends on what you're using. So the stride, this is the length of the data in the array related to that same vertex. In this case, we have the XYZ coordinates for its position and UV coordinates for the same texture on that same line. The stride has to be a size in bytes, so it takes an unsigned integer and we know that a float is four bytes and that there's five pieces of data, so we might as well get rid of all this complicated looking garbage and simply put 20 because it just takes a, a value in there. There's no need to worry about all this maths. Now, the point at the end for the XYZ coordinates and uh, well, the pointer can be set to zero because it's, well, the first variable in that vertex pointer or that vertex attribute. But for the UV coordinates, OpenGL has to skip over the first 12 bytes to get to that last eight. In other words, it has to skip over the XYZ coordinates to get to the UV coordinates. This is only a pointer because of old stuff in OpenGL, it's kind of annoying. So we have to cast it to a void pointer like this in brackets. But in reality, it's just the size of the X, Y, Z coordinates in bytes. So we can simply just change this bit to 12 and everything will still be fine. That's actually the end of the script and stuff. So I don't know what to say here other than I hope to see you next time and I hope you enjoyed.